Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Dave Considine is a Democrat from Baraboo seeking re-election in the 81st Assembly District. Dave, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks, it's good to visit with you. The governor said people like you in the legislature should be in session today debating his nine bill package of police reforms. Among other things, it would ban chokeholds, require reports of deadly force by officers, ban no-knock warrants, set uniform training standards for those that want to be police officers. Do you support all of the governor's uh, policing reforms? I Yes, I do. I, I think they're, they're long overdue. Uh, we need to keep people safe. Um, as much as I support law enforcement, and I think most of them do a really great job, there are some bad actors, as there are in any field, and we need to be taking care of that. Okay, so you would you'd be voting for all those nine bills. You'd rather be in session than talking to Wisconsin I right now, right? That's right. I was there yesterday. <laughs> I was hoped by you know I hoped uh, dreamed that maybe we would be in session somewhere or virtually in session. Okay, new subject. Um, do you support the governor's recommendations for a people's Ma maps commission to draw the next site, uh, next set of uh, congressional and legislative boundaries? Uh, current law, as you know, says the con the Constitution says party in power must draw those lines. Do you support the governor? Uh, yes, I do. The, it, what the Constitution actually says is they have the power to draw those lines. I think they we could delegate that with ease and still fulfill the Constitution. I don't think this requires a constitutional change. What it requires is that uh, I traveled around the state in my first term, and then others have done it since pushing for the Iowa model, and that's very similar, almost identical to what Governor Evers is proposing and has asked for. So I am in full support of it. I think I interviewed with nine different newspapers in my first term saying that this is what we have to do, and it's one of the reasons I'm running for a fourth term. I think it's really important this term to have the governor's veto power to have some semblance of nonpartisan redistricting regardless because the governor um, has some approval of that as well. Okay, new subject. Some Senate Republicans, some Senate Republicans want to go in session and overturn the governor's face mask edict statewide. Uh, you support that, 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 that statewide edict? I do, I do. I came out in, boy, it was early July um, and said that I wasn't sure I would support a statewide mask mandate, to be really honest. And I wrote letters to some constituents stating as much. Um, but as we proceeded to slip lower and lower and go from being one of the best in the nation in regards to controlling COVID-19 to one of the worst in the nation regarding COVID-19, as much as I'm a libertarian and regarding people having rights to do what they want to do, I think there does come a time like we have seatbelt laws and uh, traffic laws that don't allow us to drive whenever, wherever we want, as fast as we want. I think it was time that we have to say everybody needs to do this. Okay. I'm also in support of the fact that there are some, while I think we all ought to do it, I think the most important thing during this period in time, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong. And this whole discussion um, seems to make us want to take sides and judge each other and say that this person's good and this person's bad because they wear a mask or don't wear a mask. And one of my pleas for everybody is let's not get into condemning and judging people or saying they're bad uh, because of this mandate. Let's, let's assume that everybody is doing 
the best that they can. I don't know if they can't wear a mask. So I would rather we didn't condemn them if they don't, because I don't know their story or what they've gone through, what their issues are. Okay, thank you. We, um, we got a report yesterday that tax collections in the year that ended June 30 were up slightly, but there's a concern because of the p- pandemic for tax collections in the current year. If we were one billion or one one and a half billion short in the general fund, would you cut spending or raise taxes or fees? I would raise taxes or fees in a very specific way. I think we should have raised the gas tax more than we did in the past. I think it's time, fuel costs are down, we need to encourage renewable energy. Uh, I think that would be a really good thing to do. The other thing I think that Wisconsin lags far behind in is what we do with the alcohol tax, especially the beer tax. We could quintuple our beer tax and it still wouldn't be a penny for a glass of beer. I think it's ridiculous that the nation that has the highest alcohol abuse rate and consumption rate at least in the nation uh, has the lowest tax. Uh, I don't know whether those two things go together or not, but I think that is a way that we could reasonably raise fees and that most of the state would agree with that. Some of the candidates that I'm interviewing, Dave, say we could also raise revenue if we legalized recreational and medical marijuana. Do you support those? I'm getting closer and closer to it, to be honest. And it's partially because um, I've been in favor of medical marijuana for a while. And then I start thinking that, wait a minute, we don't have a lot of documented science about that medical people could even give a prescription for. And we're asking them to make a judgment about that. The medical community has not come out in favor of that yet. Um, And for that reason, and besides that, the drug companies then would probably be in charge of that and the costs could be astronomical like they are for so many other drugs and the state wouldn't benefit. Uh, So perhaps to encourage small business and a whole lot of other things, maybe the right way to go is recreational marijuana. I am still really concerned about it being a pathway drug though. And that scares me. I understand. Let's talk about property taxes. You know, Wisconsin is a high property tax state and that's why we have caps and limits on what schools and local governments can levy in terms of property taxes. If you're reelected voting on the next state budget, should those caps and limits on property tax levies stay in place? I'm not sure they should. I'm also a person who really fights hard for local control. And if a, a group of, if a local government needs to do that, that those are the people that are closest to the constituents, they're closest to the taxpayer. If they need to do that, then maybe we ought to allow them to. And I know some communities in my district um, have successfully done in whatever way they can. And while it causes some struggle, the constituency still continues to reelect and support those people. So I, 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 I think we need to allow for more local control and not control it from a high state level. Do we need to give local units of government more revenue options? You, yes. I, as you're aware, as uh, Mr. Goyke would like Milwaukee to have a referendum on a half cent sales tax. Representative Mako has got a plan or has, has floated a plan. If we expand our sales tax to now exempt products and services, give local government some of that additional revenue. Do local governments need more uh, revenue options? I think they do, especially as the state's portion has shrunk and shrunk. And with our budget struggles this cycle, it may shrink some more. So I think, I don't know whether I want us to give up some of that sales tax revenue, um, but I think allowing local governments to have more options is is a good deal and something we should be doing. We've seen how hospitals in Wisconsin and of course nationally have been in the fight to uh, treat COVID-19 patients. If you're reelected and voting on the next state budget, should hospitals have an even greater priority than they may have in the current budget? Uh, I think we need to support the hospitals. Um, 
But saying right now that I think they have to have a priority, <laughs> this is going to be a tough budget cycle to have, <clears throat> excuse me, to have budget priorities, I think. And to say okay. right now that I would give that a priority, I think that would not be fair to a whole lot of other constituencies who are also in need. And I can imagine, I, I'm not sure where it's got to go at this moment. Okay. okay. Uh, the Republican leaders of the U.S. Senate say the next COVID aid package has got to include a provision exempting businesses and organizations that follow CDC protocols on, to protect their customers and their uh, employees from COVID. They should be exempt from lawsuits. Senator C Kappinga just introduced a, a bill today to do that on the state level. Do we need a state uh, law like that? Perhaps. I looked at that law and, and just glanced at it. I haven't had a chance to vet it fully. My concern is frequently we, there is some very loose language, at least in Kapinga's law, and I haven't read the fine details yet, about what that means. <laughs> because it doesn't just say following CDC guidelines. It has a lot of other, oh, I don't have the language in front of me right now, but very loose language that could be interpreted a lot of different ways, like, um, let's say I put up barriers and that's enough <clears throat> and I um, <clears throat> don't at least ask people to wear a mask or uh, things like that. Okay. And in regards uh, to that, by the way, I had an interesting weekend. We went <clears throat> to a community north of us about, uh, I don't know, 90 miles or so. And one, both stores had a uh, sign in the window about wearing a mask as they're required to do but one of the stores the patron wasn't wearing a mask and another one they were uh, not the patron the owner. the owner and I was a little discouraged with myself I wish I'd have walked out of the second store where the owner wasn't wearing a mask um, because I think it's important that we lead in an appropriate manner. And that would have been good leadership. And I did. I also believe in positive reinforcement. And I did say something to the first owner about how appreciative I was of that. Uh, I think that's something we can all model and mimic. When school districts and local governments plan a major public works project, should they be required to give a, give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? Uh, a study found that in 2015, out-of-state contractors got 72 million in public works projects, but that more than doubled to 146 million in 2018. Should local governments have to give preference to Wisconsin companies? I think so, yes. I, you know, I, I think we need to, while we need to be competitive and, and give to the highest bidder, it also makes a lot of sense to have the money stay in our state. Um, honestly, I think some of that ties into what we've done with uh, prevailing wage with unions uh, and some of the competition is coming from out of state because they aren't abiding by a lot of the rules that our Wisconsin businesses are. Okay. Um, if you're reelected, what's your first bill you're going to sponsor next year? Oh, I'm torn. I want to do something about the environment. Uh, I'd like to do something about single use plastic bags. We have floated that. I am speaking with the governor, with um, the Department of Administration Revenue, hoping to get that alcohol tax in the budget. If I don't, that will be the first thing I sponsor, I promise you. Um, okay. And I may all look, also look at some of the things we're doing about vaping. I think um, there are too many young kids getting heavily in, you know, middle schoolers. Uh, that when surveyed half the population is saying that they're vaping or once in a while. That's a tragedy if you ask me and I think we need to do something about it in a state level and uh, taxes seem to influence kids use more than they do adults even. Final question, differences between you and your opponent on November 3? You know, I don't know where my opponent stands. To be really honest, I will look forward to you interviewing him and know that. I have not seen any social media presence. Uh, so I don't know what, what to say about that. I don't think he's going to be 
a supporter of public education, like I am. I don't think he understands agriculture, like I do. Um, even as a Democrat, I have a whole lot of people in agriculture who support me because I have a common sense. I know what it's like. I was a farmer. Uh, he does not have that background. Um, I think he will be uh, typical of a lot of my Republican colleagues in that, uh, how do I say this? Back the badge regardless and let the police do whatever they want. I would guess that he would vote against every one of the reform packages that the governor talked about. Uh, and I think we really need to do something. And I think some of the things that Republicans have posed have said they might do in the past and having task forces right now. Um, boy, we've had task forces. We had one two years ago and we did one bill out of that. Uh, we don't need any more task forces. We need to start doing things. And I suspect that he would join with that. Okay, thank you. State Representative Dave Considine of Baraboo is the Democrat seeking re-election in the 81st Assembly District. Dave, thank you for talking to Wisconsin I. Thank you for taking the time. Thank Appreciate you. It. Stay safe. Thanks, I will. sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.